Hi, I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us. One of the things we talk to a lot of IT professionals about is hyper-converged infrastructure. Red Hat is a leader in infrastructure in the data center, and we want to talk to them about what they're doing in the hyper-converged space. Joining me to talk about that is Michael St. John. He's with Red Hat. Michael, thanks for joining us today. Thank, thank you, George. It's great to see you. So let's talk about this. What are you guys doing in the uh, hyper-converged infrastructure space? Sure. Yeah. Well, so if we take a look at converged infrastructure and hyper-converged infrastructure, really started uh, coming about probably about a decade ago. Right. And uh, But the hyper-converged space started taking off, I would say, probably about five years ago. So okay. let's take a look at timeline starting around 2013. And what we saw were a number of uh, hyper-converged players coming on the scene with appliance plays. And so, you know, they were either building this on their own uh, or they were working with uh, OEMs. And essentially what you had were these infrastructure nodes built on proprietary software uh, with a very specific uh, hardware configuration right. that they were building out in nodes and you add nodes, uh, and from a, a simplicity perspective, because w what we're looking for for a hyper-converged infrastructure is something that's simple, flexible, and cost-effective. Right. And from a simplicity perspective, this made a lot of sense. Sure. Because everything was built on these building blocks. But from a flexibility perspective, if you were trying to do something a little bit out of the ordinary, not so much. And that, that was because they were like a turnkey appliance and you really didn't have a lot of options, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. And from a cost perspective, well, it was okay. Uh, you know, you save some money on, on OPEX, but from a CAPEX perspective, because it was, uh, you weren't able to, uh, uh, you weren't able to adjust things separately from a um, uh, hardware, from a uh, CPU or compute perspective, from a, um, a storage perspective. It made it difficult to scale in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and then also because it was built on proprietary, proprietary software, it really uh, had some issues with cost effectiveness. Okay, yeah, that all makes sense. Yeah, so if we take a look, you know, kind of going forward to, uh, probably about two, two and a half years ago, um, what we saw was a number of our customers, Red Hat customers, they really loved the idea of building things out with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, great product, sure. lot, lot of uh, longevity there. And you know they've been looking at uh, and using Red Hat virtualization quite a bit to cut up these servers make a virtual, nice virtual environment, and you sure. can have multiples of these. And then we have also a lot of uh, customers who are looking at software-defined storage, and as such, they use Red Hat storage for uh, for a number of different uh, implementations. And so, what we saw were a number of people that were using these types of um, products from Red Hat sure. and trying to cobble them together. Okay. And what that did was, you know, from a, a flexibility perspective, you know, that really hit the mark because they then they were able to uh, to adjust things in order to fit their needs. But from a simplicity perspective, not so much because here they were building projects on their own. Right. And, you know, the problem with that is you have a number of customers Very doing do yourself. Yeah, yeah, doing things differently. Sure. Um, from a cost pers perspective, I will say also uh, it was nice from a capex perspective because now you're dealing with you know whatever vendor you have and right. and you can build that on your own. But from an opex perspective. There's a lot of churn going on. There's a lot of uh, things that you have to know and you have right. to have people sure. to, uh, to build that and manage it. Now, coming about a year and a half ago, uh, we decided to help folks out with this. So we built a fully supported solution that we call Red Hat Hyperconverged Infrastructure. Okay. We have two flavors, one hyper-converged hyper infrastructure for cloud, another hyper-converged infrastructure for virtualization. We'll probably talk about the one for virtualization today. Okay. And essentially what we took is the best-in-class RHEL, okay. Enterprise Linux, uh, REV, or uh, Red Hat um, uh, virtualization product, and then we took uh, Red Hat cluster storage, as a software-defined storage package. Mm -hmm. And then we layered on uh, OVM for uh, networking, and we 
introduced Ansible to manage all of that and to, uh, to deploy all of that nice and quickly. Now, what that gave us were the check marks. Much more simple, flexible, because mm -hmm. you can, uh, you can uh, adjust and scale uh, your, your storage and compute separately, and it's very cost effective because it's all software defined. Okay. Now, um, so it, 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 this is essentially a bundled solution that the customer buys, like is it one, SK, one SKU, or how's that work? Yes, and this uh, coming out about a year and a half ago, version one, uh, essentially you had to build it in uh, building blocks of three nodes. You start off with three nodes and okay. you can build out from there. Now what we saw uh, from this perspective is a lot of uh, the space that we, that we were working in was uh, essentially commercial space, and it's uh, a lot of retail, banking, mm -hmm. those types of uh, implementations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, going forward now to 2018, and uh, here coming in toward the, the end of 2018, we've seen a lot of other customers that are, that are really interested in uh, in what we're doing around hyperconverged, okay. and uh, so we've we've had a lot of customers over the past year or so from the energy sector, manufacturing, public sector, who've really gravitated to, toward what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And in true Red Hat style, what we're doing is we're trying to help our customers to uh, enhance the solutions that we have available with them by looking at other things in our portfolio. Gotcha. So, for our uh, Red Hat hyperconverged infrastructure moving into 2018, uh, we had a lot of customers who were looking at a single node implementation. Oh, okay. So, so instead like of branch offices and things like that? Yeah, branch offices, but also things for like remote on the edge type of uh, applications. Gotcha, okay. And so uh, we, we, instead of having the three node uh, requirement, we have a single node implementation okay. uh, possibility. Now, another thing that we saw people wanting to do is to have a remote site recovery. And, and so uh, one of the nice things we did was build with uh, Ansible, an Ansible playbook that allows you to copy this single node over or your, imp your implementation, whatever your cluster is, copy that over to a remote site using uh, Ansible uh, playbooks, and once uh, that fails over, it, when, when, the, uh, when the, um, the original site, site A, comes back online, it can recover everything so over So the playbook there. both ways, essentially. Exactly. And so just for our viewers that might not know, uh, mm -hmm. just give them a quick uh, overview of what uh, Ansible is. Sure. Ansible is, uh, is a tool that's used for uh, automating um, okay. Some of the uh, some of the uh, scripts, etc. Okay. That you so like might a workflow have. engine kind of. Yeah. Thing? Okay. Absolutely. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. So, um, and then what? Another thing that we saw, folks. I want uh, deduplication. And uh, and compression. So we introduced. You. <laughs> So we introduced our VDO, or Virtual Data Optimization Tools, that we acquired from Permabit a couple of years ago yep, great uh, for dedupe and compression. Yep. Uh, let's see, uh, another thing that we added in was vGPUs. So uh, working with NVIDIA, we have uh, some great things that uh, are available with, uh, actually available with Rev 4.2, uh, but we incorporated this into the Red Hat hyperconverged infrastructure around vGPUs, and you can think about that from the perspective of VDI type solutions, sure. but also for life sciences, scientific research, because there's a lot of parallelization in the GPU. Right, sure. So uh, we have uh, virtual GPUs that we added in there, and we have validated configs now as well. So what we've, what we've been doing is working with uh, some of our vendors, some of our uh, partners uh, around testing all of this out for different configurations. So these would be hard, hardware partners like, a, like yeah. a Dell like or HP, HP yeah. those kind of guys. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so we have actually have three uh, different configs that we've uh, that we've worked on so far, and we will continue to add those. But we have one around server consolidation. Okay. Sort of the meat and potatoes of, of uh, hyperconverged, right? Exactly. And then data ingest. Okay. 
And then uh, also around performance, um, think about uh, MySQL type of implementations gotcha. and things of, things of that nature. Right. So, uh, and, and we are seeing a lot of implementations around energy, uh, oil rigs, uh, out, uh, out on the edge, uh, size, doing seismic analysis in the field, public sector around uh, mobile tactical operations. Uh, and then in manufacturing, what we find is there's a lot of uh, manufacturing. They have factories uh, out on the edge where mm -hmm. they're trying to gather some sensor data and bring it back. And, and so these are areas that we're looking at very closely and building out uh, what we're doing uh, with the hyperconverged infrastructure. And then, you know, moving into 2019, we'll, we'll continue to add additional features around our overall Red Hat portfolio. So think of, think of things around uh, cloud or containers, uh, those things moving forward, uh, and um, additional management capabilities and, and, um, and you know, just incorporating the whole uh, overall portfolio from Red Hat. So. Okay. Well, and you've come a long way, right? I mean, it's, it's, you've got everything kind of hit there. So In thanks. just a couple uh, of years. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Michael, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That. I would uh, just suggest folks, if you're interested in more information, go out to Red Hat, uh, R-E-D dot H-T slash H-C-I. Uh, and we also have a program out there that help people to modernize their um, virtualized infrastructure. So if you go out to red.ht slash possibilities, you'll find more information there on that as well. Great, and we'll put both of those links in the notes below. So uh, for Michael, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.